Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Uh, today we have a sort of shorter video as we're slowly waiting for our um, satellite era research to complete. Uh, things like some better engines, some solar panels, uh, so that we're able to put substantial things into orbit and actually keep them there. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so what we're going to do right now is uh, send up several different science parts into into space suborbitally and then uh, return it to Earth to get as much science as we can out of that. Um, and uh, for this we are not going to use Spyro. I'm not sure we're going to use Spyro ever again, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, this uh, rocket design is the kickstart of probably a short program called Shopper or suborbital hopper um, and this particular design is going to be launched up twice uh, it is actually going to fulfill one contract um, but that's not its main purpose um, its main purpose is to send up a camera as well as some temperature readings uh, I think a Geiger Muller, Geiger Muller counter and some biological uh, research as well uh, sending it up into space up into zero gravity and then returning it to earth and also um, I believe I just mentioned a camera to uh, provide the first footage of Earth from space ever seen. Yeah, I was actually really excited about this. Um, the design is relatively simple. What we need, we don't have any um, any heat shields at all. So I just have structural pieces for the re-entry and just uh, use the text, the ablative texture. Um, and I have also adding so a little bit, a little bit of uh, helium with RCS. Um, just to be able to orient the camera and then also orient us um, to face negative our velocity uh, so that we re-enter and um, in the way we want to. The fins are supposed to stabilize us upon re-entry as well. And this engine um, is has never been flown before, but I have done ground testing on this engine, but this is the first time that we are using this engine. Um, I was attempting to try to use it on Spyro to put, uh, make it into orbit, but uh, the engine really isn't all that good. But I, ha I have done 50% uh, flight research on it, so I felt like using it for this one. I felt like it fit the aesthetic. Uh, the next thing we wanted to do was set up a KOS script just to hold us at 80 degrees pitch to the east. And I did this, um, it wasn't necessarily necessary. <laughs> Kind of a tongue twister there um but what i discovered with using uh kos is that you don't need avionics to have to um control it um you can you don't need avionics for each stage for like 150 tons for that for your giant rocket if you have kos um controlling the vehicle um until you reach your payload you don't need avionics for it but uh, with that discovery aside, the vehicle is constructed and ready to go. On uh, the first launch is on the 26th of March, 1956. The second launch is the 13th of May, 1956. Gathering our science in space, uh, Shopper 1 is set to return to Earth. Uh, we're going to sort of use the atmosphere to help push us over as well as the RCS here. 
um, but it, we, we hold orientation and it does stay relatively stable. And uh, like I mentioned, this, this mission has launched two times, um, but I'm only showing footage of one of the launches since it is the exact same launch and I did not feel that redundancy was really all that necessary here. Uh, the parachute deployed uh, from the from the build you saw earlier. I actually switched it over to one parachute because two parachutes was a little bit overkill. However, now it does like to spin like crazy. Yeah, that suborbital hop is complete. Parachute deployed. Um, it was a fantastic view of Earth from space. We got to use the RCS to tilt down and get a look at our first stage as well as the um, as the KSC beneath us. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.